Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Following on from last week's video on people in a crowd, I thought I'd take another look at figures in watercolour. So join me now, let's dive straight into the video and see what happens. <laughs> everybody and welcome back. Before I dive into this video I just want to take a little opportunity to say thank you so much to all my new and my old or existing subscribers. Thank you so much for your support ongoing. It's fantastic and I really am overwhelmed with the amount of you that are coming on board. And with that all said if you've liked this video then give it the thumbs up at the end. That's fantastic. And if you're not a subscriber consider subscribing to the channel. It really doesn't cost you anything to do that. And in doing so, you tell uh, YouTube that it is a good channel worth watching and worth promoting. And that really does help me moving forward. And if you want to do even more than that, you can share it with your friends. And above all, you can add comments underneath this video. If you've got something to say, whether it's good, bad or indifferent, I'm more than happy to read them. And if I can answer your queries, I'm more than happy to do that too. If you want a bit more, then don't forget, apart from this every Friday video that I put out, there is also a Monday and a Friday night live stream from me. Every 7 p.m., that's London time, every week, there's one oil, one watercolour weekly. So get involved. Come along, set your calendar, set your, your alarm, whatever it is you need to do. Uh, I have one gentleman that gets up at four in the morning from Australia to watch this and so that's fantastic and I thank him very very much for that. But if you would like to do that then come onto the chat, say something, say hi, I'll always say hi back. There is also a facility at the bottom should you feel inclined to help contribute to the cost of running the uh, all the equipment and everything else and the time spent on streaming you're more than welcome to do that and contribute to those efforts and above all if you would like to have a lot more from me than that, then dive on over to my Patreon. It's been there a little while, it is growing, and it's got a lot of more content on it than I put onto my YouTube. So if you want some more interaction with me personally, on our Facebook community that is behind the Patreon, and all the content that has been added to it month in, month out, then take a look at it, and if for a cup of coffee, two cups of coffee, whatever it is, you know that you're supporting the channel, you're supporting my efforts and all the time that goes into filming, editing and the equipment and the tech and the storage to make all this happen for you, you can get involved and you know you're doing some good there too. And you're also getting something back for it as well. So with all that said and done and before I put everybody to sleep, let's get straight on into this watercolour figures. Let's see what happens. Hope you enjoy it. And I'll see you all soon in the next video. Bye-bye for now, everyone. Bye-bye. So here we are again, and it's figures in watercolour. Now, following on from last week, I did figures in a crowd. That was a lot of fun. But I'm sure that it's still probably got a few people thinking, well, how do I get figures in a crowd? Or how do I photograph figures generally? I don't normally go out and get them in my photos. So I put myself in that position in the gallery one day last week and I went out with my iPad. I stood in my local high street for, I don't know, five minutes or so. I took some random shots. I was discreet about it, of course. I didn't want to get people upset by the fact that I was just taking photographs. But if you are discreet, no one is really going to take much notice of you. Just take a few shots and then come back, analyze your shots. Now, I found several people that I decided to use. This lady walking up with a, a bag and um, she had another carrier bag in the other arm. And the idea was that I just wanted to portray two or three people in this sort of random aspect. Now, hopefully, I will have uh, given you some insight as to the drawing. And this is what I'm doing here. I'm looking at the proportions, the shapes, the figure. I've got her demeanor, the way she's walking, or the weight of her stance. I've also put in a shadow as well. I started painting quite early with this one and I wanted to put a bit of umber and I give her dark hair. So I went in 
with some blue as well just to give her a darkish black coloring she had a quite a gray uh, suit on i think it was and it, the light on top and then darker on the trousers so i don't think it was a matching one but you could see definitely that it was of a gray influence a blue gray influence so i tried to replicate that in the paint as best i could now i went straight into the second figure the second and the third third figure are a couple and i wanted to bring those to be um a little forward of the first lady she is this one has got a nice top on nice blue top and she's got a nice pattern skirt which was quite a random print actually it's quite interesting so even if i got some of the shapes wrong it really didn't matter because the print pattern was quite a random one now she was walking away too along with a gentleman beside her now the thing is that you also notice that the heads are pretty much the same size uh, not the same size same height sorry the same height and that's my eye line that is my the point of which i can see along that's my horizon line that's my um so the height that i stand and what i can see so all the heads will be roughly along that line now obviously as i said before there are some people shorter some people longer but at the same time it's a general rule so you're going to make everything a little bit tiny a little bit smaller if she's in front of the lady to one side now i'm going to go straight in i'm measuring off of her and i'm looking and already thinking about the gentleman beside her so i'm going to put his head in now and just check and every time i do look i sort of look at her line coming down i'm going to look at his spine that's coming down and i draw that spine in often it gives me an idea of the um the way that they're standing if they're putting their weight on one leg or another if they're bending over playing a sport whatever it might be but you can use that line as the line of the backbone in a sense from the head neck down through the spine of the back into the buttocks and then obviously you can continue it down but of course you're into the legs but this guy is a little bit stockier than his partner or his wife and i just looked at all the familiar characteristics and i'm lining up bits from him to her seeing what from the photograph uh, that line up and work i will put the picture up and you can see what i was seeing and uh, hopefully you'll get something from that don't be afraid of using the erasers i'm doing here if it's not quite right don't live with it get onto it and change it but I'm making tiny little marks. That's all my drawings about. I don't try and get a definite outline. I'm trying to suggest the movement, the shape of both these people. They have an interaction together. He's slightly turned toward her and she's uh, walking forward. He's carrying a bag as I'm putting in now. She's got an over shoulder satchel type thing. Still not too sure about the back part of his legs there is. A little break but i wanted to look and make his leg tilt forward because he's in mid stride so i tried to do that and then i just put the soles of his foot in to indicate that the leg is on the rise and is coming backwards so i'm pretty much ready now to start painting a few stripes on his shirt just check on the head and make sure a little adjustment in the shape and the form and the same with the lady we're pretty much ready to go with some color on this so i'm going to give them pretty much i'm not going to go in too much in trying to get different hairs different blondes and that i'm just trying to make them fairly generic figures i know i've used them models of pictures of actual people in the street although as i say i was discreet about it and didn't use any that were facing me and even if i had it done i would have just used a fairly generic formal face i wouldn't try and put any detail anything that would cause the person or could cause the person to be recognized i think that you have to be a little bit careful about but i think that if you do it like the way i've done it you can you can go out and in fact what you can also do is you could go out with a little sketchbook and a little watercolor set in your pocket and you could sit on a bench uh, in the park or in the street or wherever it might be 
and just sit and sketch people, even if they are incomplete because the person has walked past you, uh, they've gone about their business, you've missed it, you've only got maybe the head and the shoulders, or you may be just do, uh, let's think, let's just do a little side of the body and suggest down to the legs or you even do a very very simple um, sketch fast sketch that creates the atmosphere of their movement and I think you can get away and learn so much from doing that because the more you do it the more you understand about the human anatomy the human figure in motion and when you come to put that down in watercolor so the whole thing just becomes a lot easier all about practice but more than the practice it's all about the understanding it's all about getting the eye and the hand working together with the brain so that you start to see things more easily what i've done here is i did want i didn't want them all just to be standing on a white board or white paper uh, when they were finished so i felt that i just wanted to put in a little bit of background and it's nothing special i assure you a little scribble a little bit of paint here and uh to su more suggested than anything else i actually did turn over to the um angular brush which i often use and that is a tremendous little brush because it can flick and do lots of little marks like trees and shrubs and sticks and all sorts of things you can have a lot of fun with it and that is quite a uh i think it's called a sword liner brush and I, it's got so much flexibility but here i'm just using a small round just to get a background color and that also helps isolate these figures in space it's working the negative spaces around them so that i can then carry on creating them once this is all dry but it, it was only to give you some idea of um, terra firma, of a sense of being more than anything else with these people. I wasn't trying to draw or paint any specific piece of landscape, I assure you of that. In fact, these guys and this lady and this, two, this gentleman were walking down the high street, so nothing I painted here even comes close to representing a main village or town high street so anyway i hope you can forgive me for that but it was just to give them a sense of purpose a sense of being so here's that sword liner i spoke of it is so floppy so flexitive flexitive flexible and i think that you can have so much fun with one of those brushes if it's not in your brush arsenal then i suggest that you look online I use a Rosemary and Company one. She does some tremendous brushes. But if you want another brand, there are many brands out there that you can use. And I wouldn't really worry too much about it. What I'm doing now is I's and T's. I'm going back in with some darker colors. I'm refining the first wash. The first wash was the initial wash over the clothing. Now I'm going in with things like skin tones on the gentleman, his bag, his jeans. I've got another coat of color just to give him the difference between some lights and some darks, some shadows and some contrast. Moreover, it's contrast we see. It's contrast that uh, allows us to have the difference between a very flat and something that actually works, something that looks three-dimensional. Without contrast between one value and another, then you get this term that often is used called very flat. A painting becomes very flat when there's very little contrast. And you actually notice that on a day when there's very little sun. All the colors are really saturated on a sunless day, you know, cloud covered day. But the uh, colors that you see, albeit that they are saturated, there's no definition, there's no shadows, no car shadows, no uh, real defined color treatment between one area and another so it becomes quite flat so when you get a bit of sun and you get a bit of highlight then you get this difference between uh, the sort of shadows the lights the darks and that we call contrast and that's what brings a picture together i'm doing this lady walking with a satchel bag or a, a handbag over her shoulder she's got a shopping bag i'm putting another coat of blue I'm using a, a little bit of um, thalocyanin blue in here and I've given the lady with a jacket on a little bit more definition on one side and it's fairly obvious I hope that where the sun is 
up to the right and coming down from quite a high so she's got shadow on one side and down one side of her body but the other side and the shoulder is light the lady's handbag is a little bit brown and a little bit warm so i'm just putting that in essentially it's a white bag with a little bit of shadow and shade on it it doesn't make a lot of difference it's just a small observation you can see the colors in the lady's dress are greens blues and yellows and they're quite a random print which is quite interesting but it meant to say that the accuracy of whether hers was exactly the same wasn't that important what i'm doing now is i'm putting some final touches in i'm just putting in the shadows to suggest moreover where the direction of the sun is coming from but it anchors the people to the ground it gives them that sense that they are attached to terra firma putting a few extra stripes in the fence and a little bit on the ground just to add to the environment we are pretty much there there's not a lot to do i just wanted to finish off with a few shadows coming across this area here but i just wanted to thank you for taking the trouble to watch this video and i do hope that along with the other one that you got something from it there are also other videos which i shall put a little link to in the top corner where i have touched upon figures in the past so please while you're at it take a look at those and uh, have fun try them yourself go out with your camera take a few shots go out with your phone much easier take a few shots of people or even sit on the bench and draw a few at the same time in a sketchbook either way uh, it's worth doing and it's worth having a whole heap of fun trying out your own styles and seeing how you get on with painting figures in watercolor until next time take care happy painting catch you all very very soon bye bye